the terraforming of varied planets, that is, transforming it into planets similar to Earth, is one of the favorite themes in science fiction work set in space. Terraforming is sometimes narrated as part of the previous history of the world. Although it is not portrayed directly when the plot of movies and books begins, people have been living on Mars and Venus for a long time. In addition, especially in strategic simulation games, there may be direct involvement in the terraforming of distant planets, migrating their civilization or annexing them to their empire. Hello guys! Many enthusiastic fans have already made several proposals about the terraforming of Mars, but is this really feasible? In addition, could humanity really reap practical benefits from this? Welcome to our channel. Today we are going to address this subject, so it's time to get started. Why Mars? There are projects aimed at terraforming various planets and moons, but in this case, we will focus especially on the example of Mars. Why? Of course, there are several important reasons for this. First, Mars is relatively close to Earth and is accessible with current technology levels. In addition, Mars is the most suitable target for terraforming due to specific parameters. Mars does not have a dense atmosphere that requires removal, and its gravity, although smaller, is sufficiently within a tolerable range, unlike celestial bodies like Titan. And also Mars is the only planet in the solar system beyond Earth that has water in the geological past and a rich atmosphere in oxygen. Recovering what already existed is much easier than starting from scratch, isn't it? Therefore, from this point, I would like to discuss the main problems faced by Mars. It is worth noting that compared to other celestial bodies in the solar system, the situation on Mars is still considered easy. First, Mars does not have a magnetic field. This is partly due to its weak gravity, which meant that Mars could only maintain an atmosphere for a maximum of 2 billion years. When the atmosphere escaped into space, the hydrosphere evaporated quickly and was blown by the solar wind. Just as in celestial bodies like Venus and Titan, which have atmospheres even with extremely weak or non-existent magnetic fields, mentioning these examples here would be inappropriate. Venus has a high temperature and active solar winds, but is able to maintain its atmosphere due to its size and adequate mass. In addition, Titan is a small celestial body, but it is extremely cold with an average temperature of about minus 180 degrees Celsius. Therefore, atmospheric gases in Titan become heavier and are less likely to escape. On the other hand, Mars is a smaller celestial body and lighter compared to Titan, but it is much warmer. During the summer, in the regions near the equator, the temperature can reach about 20 degrees Celsius. With this relatively high temperature, it is not possible to retain atmospheric gases. In addition, Mars is extremely dry, with almost the entire surface covered by deserts. Most of the water may be contained in the glaciers and possibly in permafrost, as recent discoveries indicate. Due to the lack of sun on Mars, even if the problem of the very thin atmosphere inadequate for breathing was resolved, it would not be possible to grow terrestrial plants. Although Mars has an occasional occurrence of rain and snow, it is extremely scarce and moisture evaporates quickly. In other words, we need to solve several interrelated problems. The lack of soil is related to the absence of plants. The absence of plants and multicellular organisms on Mars is related to the fact that Mars does not have a significant hydrosphere and is largely desert. The lack of a hydrosphere is related to the absence of an atmosphere, and the absence of an atmosphere is related to the lack of a magnetic field. Earth Formation, Methods and Challenges There are many models proposed for the Earth formation of Mars, but some of them must be rejected immediately. For example, one of these models involves the drop of atomic bombs in the polar caps to melt the ice and create a hydrosphere on Mars. 
First, the main component of the soil of Mars is iron oxide, where iron is easily activated and retains radioactivity in the long run. This means that we can say that we only add the challenge of strong environmental radiations to the problems of Mars. Then, this method does not solve other problems on Mars, and anyway, the hydrosphere would end up freezing or evaporating. There is also the proposal to collide celestial bodies on Mars to generate a magnetic field. For example, the idea of colliding the closest moon to Mars, Phobos, or alter the orbit of some large asteroids so that they fall on Mars. However, there is no guarantee that this will be successful. The Earth's magnetic field is sustained by the Moon and the structure of the tectonic plates. But on telluric planets, with the exception of Earth, these two elements are not always present. Therefore, they may not have a magnetic field, or when they do, it is usually much weaker than Earth. In addition, asteroids are clearly irrelevant. Although Venus has suffered natural bombings in the past, it has not generated a strong enough magnetic field to meet our conditions. The Earth was also the target of extremely large collisions by asteroids in the past, but there is no evidence that such collisions have affected the Earth's magnetic field or have strengthened it in any way. In addition, there is the proposal to carry out bombings for a different purpose. If hydrogen is supplied to Mars, there is a possibility that it will react with the iron oxide mentioned above to generate water. Steam gases such as ammonia and methane, which are more powerful than carbon dioxide, can heat Mars to a tolerable temperature. All these substances are present in frozen celestial bodies, such as comets and objects from the Kuiper Belt. There is a proposal to bring these celestial bodies to Mars further increasing the amount of water available on the Red Planet. Even if we ignore the immense cost of energy involved in this process, there is still the problem of the magnetosphere. Especially with the increase in temperature, there may be more water evaporation than water brought to the planet. In addition, there are science channels aimed at the general public that propose more radical methods. One of these methods involves the installation of powerful laser devices in space around Mars to melt the soil to a depth of 8 meters. This would result in the transformation of the entire surface of Mars into lava, releasing all the water on the planet. This water would turn into rain and contribute to the formation of a hydrosphere. To solve the problem of the magnetic field, a magnetic shield would be installed in front of Mars. In addition, the soil would be processed in a special way. Plankton would be introduced into the oceans and resistant plants would be planted on solid ground. Although it may seem like an incredible proposal at first glance, it is important to note that this would require massive labor costs, would extend for such a long period that it would not be completed in less than 100 years and would impose a significant burden on the resources of all humanity. In addition, unfortunately, humanity is currently far from being unified, and there is a mountain of government issues, in addition to the problem of colonization of other planets, that need to be addressed. Yes, it is unlikely that the situation will change in the near future. What is necessary for us? To sum up, it became clear that the process of terraforming is in any case something extremely time-consuming and dispensatory. In addition, it became clear that we need a true utopia on Earth, where we can address all these issues without being distracted by wars or waste of resources. Here certainly arises a natural question. What exactly do we need this for? If the intention is just to create a space base on Mars, it may be enough to have domes capable of maintaining the Earth's atmosphere without the mandatory need for terraforming the entire planet. In this context, two possible scenarios can be considered. They are the threat of extinction of the Earth and the superpopulation. The first will probably not occur in the next thousands of years. The second, let's say, can be considered more like an invented problem. The superpopulation is observed mainly in highly urbanized areas and in nations classified as developing countries, which have not yet gone through the demographic transition with 
fewer descendants and a significant portion of their active population composed of middle-aged and elderly individuals, similar to developed countries, even if they have access to vaccines and medical care. Well, folks, and with that, we end our video today. Thank you all for watching to the end. I hope you enjoyed our content. Let's summarize what has been discussed so far. According to scientist calculations, the Earth's population will eventually stabilize between 11 billion and 12 billion people. If innovative technologies such as food cultivation in space farms or laboratories planned to be achieved by the middle of this century are available, providing food for this population will be fully feasible. In other words, it simply makes no sense to migrate to Mars or other places. For scientists, astronauts, or for the purpose of resource mining, small habitat spaces such as domes or underground habitats are sufficient. It is not necessary to use lasers. Of course, it seems to be very interesting. But tell me, what do you think? Please write here in the comments. We always read your comments with great interest. Now it's time for us to say goodbye for a short period of time. See you in the next content here on the Wikivadia Plus channel. A big hug and see you soon.